Hey witches. So I have 13 things that you can do to honor, to celebrate, and to grow with the dark moon. So the first one, I had to go with anything related to Hecate. This is when you do Dipnon, where you leave offerings for her. If you're going to do a working where you need to evoke her or invoke her, it's a good time. It's also a good time to meditate with the kate or meditate in general, which we'll talk about that later, but to meditate with her, especially if you're a devotee or if she's a goddess that you work with a lot, you want to do that. And also you can charge anything you use that you to work with the kate. You can charge those items, including statuary under the dark moon. You can also make dark moon, dark moon water, which is the next one. Um, you can use dark dark moon water and spells to get rid of the old and to banish anything that doesn't serve you. Or um, in a banishment spell, it's sort of like getting rid of stuff. That's what dark moon water is for. So anything you want to use it for that's trying to get rid of something that does not serve you, use it. You can also drink it to kind of get the things out of you that you want to release. You can drink it. Um, it's good to add in some safe dark crystals into the water. And then just stick it in the fridge and have some every day. And while you drink it, just focus on what you're trying to get rid of. So the next one is to locate the dark moon using an app. It's hard to find just looking up at the sky. You can find it, but it's it makes it a lot easier to use an app. There's lots of apps that you can get. You can just type in solar system into the app store and a whole bunch will come up. I can't remember the name of the one that I use. Something Finder, Star Finder, I think. I don't know, but just find one and it's fun. It's also helpful to locate other things in the, in the sky. It'll show you everything, every constellation, every star every planet. It's fun. So next, you can also use the dark moon water for a divination tea. You should use some type of divination tea on the dark moon when you're going to do divination because it will help open your third eye. And I will link my video for witchy teas below. And there is one on there specifically for this. Just use dark moon water instead of any other water. If you don't have it, it's fine. It's just a good time to use dark moon water if you do have it. So next, you can perform spells for getting rid of, of anything that doesn't serve you or banishing something that does not serve you. Kind of like I talked about the dark moon water. This is a great time to do spells for that. You can do it with candle magic. You can do a petition. You can burn something. You can add dark moon water into the spell. But this is the time to do that. Next, I put baneful magic just because it's a good time. It's, it's you know, dark and you're, getting, you're sort of getting rid of something in a way too when you're doing baneful magic because someone has hurt you to the point to where you want to get back at them. So anytime is a good time for baneful magic if you ask me if someone has hurt you in the wrong way. But I'm um, Dark Moon, no different. Do that baneful magic. But remember to be safe and make sure it's warranted because if it's not, it's not good for you. So make sure that it's warranted. Make sure you're protected. And I'll link my video on baneful magic too. So next, of course, shadow work. This is a time where you're really looking inside yourself and looking at your life and setting goals for the month. So it would make sense that you go to your darkest place inside and do some of that shadow work to kind of help bring to the surface what you need to work on. So next, for number eight, I put right in your journal about what you are grateful for. Any time of the month, any moon phase, any day of the week is a, a wonderful time for you to be showing gratitude. You have to show gratitude. So next, you can journal. You can write a list of your intentions and goals for that lunar cycle. This is like a time where you're planting seeds. You're getting rid of what doesn't serve you. And then you're planting seeds for what you want to manifest 
during that lunar cycle or during the next three lunar cycles, or it could be for the whole year. <coughs> so next, <clears throat> sorry guys, I don't know what the hell's going on in my throat. So next for number 10, you can plan spells for the upcoming month. Get out your witchy planner and go for it. Just come up with whatever you're going to do and set the month up. 11, take a ritual bath with salt to cleanse yourself of everything that doesn't serve you. You can banish even through a bath. You can even do a shower where you're focusing on the element of water to banish anything from you that does not serve you. Just make sure you have focus. And then at the end of your shower, you can dump some salt water over your body and then towel off. For 12, light a bonfire. It's, it's so dark outside that a bonfire just seems like the perfect thing. And then while you have that burn, that burn fire, <laughs> that bonfire, you can burn items that relate to what does not serve you or representations of those things. So if you just had, went through a breakup and you have some things that your ex gave you, light a bonfire on the dark moon, speak your intentions aloud to banish any feelings that you have left, if you want to banish those, or, you know, whatever you want to get rid of, and then just throw those things into the fire. And then for 13, I put rest and recuperate, because the dark moon is a time for also for reflection, and just rest, because you've gone through that entire moon cycle of, of hard work, and sometimes you just want to rest on the dark moon, and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do anything if you're not feeling up to it, because you're tired, or you have nothing you want to get rid of, and you feel you're good to go, then just rest and recuperate. But that's all I have, and check out the videos I linked below, and blessed be. Bye.